Welcome to this training session on the Wattstopper Emergency Lighting Control Unit. This training is being provided today by the Technical Support Section at Wattstopper Legrand. First I'd like to point out that the, the ELCU, as we'll call it going fo forward, the abbreviation for the Emergency Lighting Control Unit, comes in two different versions, the ELCU 100 and the ELCU 200. The ELCU 100 is a DIN rail mounted device. It can be mounted in any enclosure with a, a DIN rail mounting and we're depicting it here in the bottom of one of our lighting control panels in a partitioned off section on a piece of DIN rail. Now the ELCU 200 is a plenum rated controller and if you've worked with our uh, power packs in the past for uh, switching with occupancy sensors this mounts the same way through a half inch knockout into a junction box. Now the physical characteristics are different on these two devices but the electrical characteristics are the same. They both operate at either 120 volts AC or 277 volts AC and they both have a 20 amp rated relay contact on the emergency side of the circuit. Today we're going to start out talking about the ELCU 200 since that's our most popular device I'll use it in this presentation and we're going to start out with it with a diagram with it used as a control device. Now this is the wiring diagram you're going to see in our documentation. It's a pretty standard wiring diagram in all of our documents and you're going to see that we have a normal power side and an emergency power side. So let me start out by pointing out one thing, this is a common misconception, that first of all let me say that the ELCU is not a transfer switch or a transfer device. It does not transfer power from normal to emergency or anything like that. Okay? What we actually do is the normal line, the commercial power input side, comes in through a control device a switch, a relay, a power pack, a DLM relay and one of our room controllers. Any device that switches the, the hot lead on and off, just like a light switch would, out through your normal lighting load, the multiple fixtures or single fixture, whatever it may be, and it returns back on the normal neutral to your electrical panel. So notice the ELCU didn't do anything with that circuit all we're actually doing is sensing the presence of power prior to the control device and this is simply to determine whether power is present or whether power has failed. The other thing we're doing is we're sensing the position of the switch. So we come in after our control device and we're sensing whether that control device is on and passing power through the low lighting load or whether it's off and we're not getting power through the lighting load. So all we're doing is sensing much like a voltmeter. And on the emergency side now, it's a different story. Uh, emergency power comes in from an always on source. Let's say an up system or what have you. Coming from an emergency breaker panel through the emergency in. But whenever we get over to the ELCU now, we actually do have a set of 20 amp relay contacts in the ELCU on the emergency side. So we do actually switch the emergency power on and off through this device and then the power comes out through the emergency lighting to the emergency neutral once it goes through the load. Okay, with me so far? Let's continue on. We're going to start out by replacing the uh, control device and I'm going to make it very simple today. Let's just use a regular light switch. On, regular on off light switch. Okay, so let's go ahead and show also this set of 20 amp relay contacts on the emergency side. So now we're going to start out with power. We have power, normal power coming in. It's going to dead end at our switch. Now we're going to take this in baby steps and go step by step to make sure you completely understand what we're doing with the circuit. We also have emergency power coming in on the power inside and it's going to dead end at our 20 amp relay contact because these contacts are shown open right now. 
since we do have normal power present, notice we have power sensed on on the normal power sensing lead. So that tells the ELCU that we do not have a power failure, we're not in a power failure condition, and it tells it what to do with the relay in this particular situation. Now, we're going to close the light switch. That's going to complete the circuit through your normal lighting fixtures and back on your neutral. But at the same time we close that switch, now we have power on the normal switch sense lead. This tells the ELCU another piece of information. We have power available and our switch now is in the closed position. And what does that tell the ELCU? It tells it that you should close this relay contact on the emergency side. So essentially what you're going to find is that the 20 amp relay on the emergency side is going to follow the state of your light switch. Okay? And of course when the ELCU closes the 20 amp relay we turn on the emergency lighting. Okay? So next step we turn the lights off. Normal lights go off when we open the switch. Relay opens. Emergency lights go off. Switch goes on. And both fixtures, emergency and normal, turn on. And it happens just that fast. So, the next condition we need to talk about is what happens in a power failure. Okay, commercial power has failed. We're not sensing any power on the power sensing lead. At this point, it makes absolutely no difference what position the switch is in. Open, closed, on, off, doesn't matter. Because when the ELCU does not sense power on the normal power sensing lead, the ELCU closes the 20 amp relay contacts. These contacts closed and stay closed to meet the UL 924 code for emergency circuits. And it will complete the circuit for the emergency fixtures to stay on as long as there is a power outage. Now, when power finally returns, it doesn't matter what state the switch is in because it's just going to assume what it did before. In this case, we left the switch in the on position. So now we're sensing power. We also have power after the switch. Normal lights are on. Emergency lights are on. Switch is off. Normal lights are off. Emergency lights are off. And on like that. Okay? So, that's the first uh, circumstance that we'd like to talk about with the ELCU. The second one is the ELCU used as a shunt or a bypass device. This is another diagram that's also in our documentation. And what we're actually doing here is we have a normal commercial power coming in through a line voltage dimmer. And this dimmer, not a 0 to 10 volt dimmer, but a line voltage, one that clips the AC, is going through our normal lighting circuit, our fixtures, and returning on the neutral. So we're varying the output of this dimmer to brighten and dim the lighting load. Okay, same thing on the emergency. We have a dimmer coming in, going through the emergency side, and back out. And why don't we have the same dimmer running both of them? Well, two different power sources. We have a normal power electrical panel, an emergency power electrical panel with separate neutrals, separate phases, could whatever. And you don't want to short those together. So the next thing I want to point out is in this situation we actually cap off the normal swi switch sensing lead. So just like in our previous discussion, here's our 20 amp relay contacts. And what is this telling the ELCU since we cap off the normal uh, switch sense lead. That's basically giving it the indication that a switch, if it was attached, it is open. So when normal power is applied, this is telling the ELCU to keep the relay open because there's no power on the switch sense lead. Okay? So here's power applied from both sides. Our normal power is coming in, it's being sensed. So we, the ELCU knows we don't have a power failure. The power is going through the dimmer to our normal lighting load. 
and we're turning on the neutral. Power is coming in the emergency side, going through the emergency lighting load, and we're turning on the neutral. So lights dim up and down based on input of these dimmers. Okay. Now we have a power failure. Just like before, when power fails, we have no power on this um, normal power sense lead. So it detects that we've had a power failure, and what does it do? It tells the ELCU relay to close, and it's going to stay closed for the duration of the power outage. And when those relay contacts close, now it actually puts a shunt or a short around the dimmer because there's less resistance through our relay contact than there is through this dimmer. So now the circuit's going to come in, go through the relay, and back out to the fixture, emergency fixture. And what does this do for us? This out allows us to meet the UL924 electrical code stating that the emergency light fixture has to come on 100% bright because suppose this dimmer was dimmed down low or, or what have you. Well, by code, we've got to brighten this fixture up to 100%. And but we do that by bypassing the dimmer by shining around it. And that's what the ELCU does in a power failure when you're using dimmers. So, normal power restores. We go back to normal operation. The relay contact opens because now we have power here. It thinks that if we had a switch, it was in the open position. And now power is being forced through the two dimmers. All right. And they go back to their normal mode of operation, dimming the lights. Does that make sense? OK. Well, let's move on to the next one. Now, this is the final uh, situation that we'd like to talk about where the ELCU 200 can be used. Now, this is not shown in any of our documentation. This is going to show the ELCU 200 when power is fed from a transfer switch. All right, so let's jump right into that. A little bit different drawing. I want to point out some things here. First, let me start out by noting that there is no normal lighting load, no fixtures on the normal side. Okay? The other thing is down here, we have a transfer switch involved. We have normal commercial power coming in through a transfer switch feeding a lighting load that at this point in time would be used as a normal lighting load because the transfer switch is in feeding coming in from uh, the feeding the commercial power in. All right. So let's jump into this. We're going to put in our light switch again and Essentially, here is our 20 amp relay contact again, and essentially here is power. Okay, we have an unswitched power source, as with the others, coming in to our switch, and the power now is being sensed on the power sense lead, the normal power sense lead. So the ELCU knows that we have normal power, and it also knows that the switch is in the open position. Now. It, it looks kind of funny. Sometimes people think, oh my gosh, you can't do that. You're shorting uh, uh, normal power to the neutral. Well, no we're not. Normal power comes in, goes through the light switch, and to the normal switch sense lead, and dead, dead ends. It's not tied to the neutral. All we're using this for is so we can sense the presence or the absence of power again, just like in previous illustrations. All right? So, when the switch closes, now, we, we sense the presence of power after the switch. This tells the ELCU to close the relay. And now the, light, the lighting load, which currently is a normal commercial power lighting load, coming in through the transfer switch, goes through the ELCU relay, out through the lighting load, back on the neutral. OK? Light switch opens, relay opens, lights turn off. No power failure. We're just turning the lights on and off. Lights on again. All right. 
Now let's say we have a power failure. So what happens now is let's say we have a generator on this circuit. The generator starts. It takes a second or two for the generator to reach the correct RPM. Then the voltage and the frequency stabilize. Now our generator is ready to cut in. So our transfer switch changes positions, cuts away from the normal commercial power, and gives contact to the generator, which now goes online. And now the generator is supplying power to our ELCU. Now, since the normal power line is not detecting power on this normal power sense lead, we have no power sensed here. That again makes our relay close and stay constantly closed for this lighting load, which now is an emergency lighting load because it's running off of our it's running off of our generator. It was normal, now it's emergency. And we're feeding it through these 20 amp contacts. And the position now of our switch, again, makes absolutely no difference. Because without the power on the normal power sense lead, our relay contact stays closed 100% of the time until power is restored. So, let's continue on and let's restore the power. Power is restored. And our switch is still in the on position. We're sensing power on the normal power sense lead. We're sensing power on the switch sense lead. Tells the relay to close. And our lighting load is on. And our transfer switch transferred back over, of course, to commercial power. That's the initial thing that happened. So, switch turns off. Light fixture turns off. Switch turns on. Light fixture turns back on. Does that make sense? I certainly hope so. And uh, if you have any questions or need any more clarification about the ELCU 200, please contact the technical support section from our web page. This is our Wattstopper web page. You can drop this in. It'll come in as an email to us. We'll be glad to get back with you and explain anything. Or you can contact us as you always have in the past at 1-800-879 8585. This concludes the training session on the ELCU 200 and I certainly thank you for watching.